Welcome back everybody, Dren608 plays, playing Rogue Trader here by Alkite Games. Uh, I have to go talk to these people. I've got Aeronomus, Dolorso over here, Orton the Grey, Janus Noble, Caligius Winterscale, and Incendia Corda. These are the two I have to talk to. I don't know who that is. And I know him. So, we're going to go talk to these people. Uh, let's talk with Hieronymus first, or are these guys all going to be together? Like, like, that's everybody together. Okay. Caligio's Winter Scale, Dren 6 Trader. There you are. Welcome to the circle where each member is as powerful, ambitious, greedy, and vain as the last. That is to say, the noble rogue traders. watching him with barely suppressed contempt. Yes, you have found yourself suitable company, Caligius. At the very least, now you can enjoy idle diversions, boast about your power, and indulge in profane pastimes with one who is your equal rather than a member of the lower classes. Can I observe them? Clarice Winters is a broad-shouldered, athletic-looking man. He frequently flashes a bright smile, no less dazzling than the blade of the power axe he carries. Every part of him, from the toes of his magnificent boots to the tips of his hair, radiates strength, and he deserves and the desire to live and win. His smile is crooked, as if ready to turn into a hostile snarl at any moment. Next to him is an unmoving hulk of a man clad in armor. His low forehead and gloomy face bear signs of degradation, and his bloodshot eyes are expressionless like a pair of glass buttons. <coughs> it's India Corda radiates cosmic cold. Her skin is unnaturally white, and a nervous tick is constantly tugging at the left side of her noble visage. Garbed in full dress uniform, adorned with purity seals, she is embodiment of a true imperial aristocrat. Haunting her side is a gaunt shadow of a priest in plain black robes. That's harmon harmonious. I know him. Harmonious, who you met on footfall, gives you a respectful nod. Nod coldly. Should I try and consider them friends? God, I don't know what to do here. Nod coldly. It doesn't tell me what that does. I guess I just like my vapid entertainments and irreverent fun can leave to leave to Dargonus at any time. She always so brace. I'm gonna welcome to Dargonus friends, I guess. Friends, eh? Would you look at that, Incendia? Now you have a whole new. F now you have a whole friend. Gives you a carefree wink, but his posture exudes a challenge. I don't like him. I will think twice before calling an individual question purity, my friend. You seem to find me objectionable. Did you expect any different? I watched for years as outlaws thrived on footfall, and then, at long last, I had a chance to put an end to it. To seize that thug of Vladimir by the throat, to force footfall to atone, and put the fear of him back of him back into the masses. But you interfered. Say footfall same stars by granting it your patronage and delivering shipments of grain. And destroyed my plan for the sake of banal profit. It already taught you only too well, it seems. She was too she too was far less concerned with her duty to the expanse than her own personal interests, but you can be sure that I will not cease cleansing the Furabunda system of the pirate scourge, and if your trade prospects are damaged in the process, you will have only yourself to blame. Just holds up his hands in a placating just none are without fault, noble Incendia. What point is there in targeting someone for their turpitude when the true purity can never be found? Give up the sensation you removed from this planet. I bested you simple as that. That is, this is trade. My apologies, I failed to perceive the essence of your saintly mission and base extortation. No, this one. You threatened to starve footfall. I brought them salvation. So which of us serves the Emperor and which their own unhealthy ambitions? Please, I will believe it no sooner than hearing word that half the population of the Den of Heresy has been sent into the Void's embrace. I have faith that the blessed Dren Sixoi trader is perceive, perceptive enough to see the appalling nature of the residents that de, of that depraved place. Your appearance here is unexpected. 
Esteem Heronius is my confessor. I am greatly obliged to him for agreeing to accompany me on this journey. May the Emperor's light guide your way across the abyss of human wickedness. Uh, I take you were not overly fond of Thedora? She was of the same breed as Esp. She stops short, then continues in a lowered voice. Conceited, insolent, unaware of the Emperor's stern gaze set upon her, I do not doubt her wisdom and courage, but Theodora did not have a shred of humility or fear of his wrath. Lore Empyrean success, Asp. That must be Aspice, Aspice Corda. You remember the name. From what you recall, she was a rogue trader too, and a renowned one at that. Well, I, for one, like Theodora. The stories they told of her travels to nameless stars, and yes, there was no fear in her. And his lively expression grows a little grayer. He liked her. Who is Aspis Corda to you? Oh, this is Insignia's favorite subject. She just loves talking about Aspis. <laughs> Example of the contemptible Aspis is a warning to us all. Even among rogue traders, empowered by the Emperor himself, a seed of perversion can blossom. Perception test succeeded. You notice Incendia seemingly freeze and choke up at the mention of Espus. The priest's condemning words cause her icy rigidness to evaporate and her dark eyes filled with righteous fury. She twitches with with the rhythmic rhythm of artillery fire. That reprobate is my forebear and my curse. Espus Cordia was a cruel, covetous, blaspheming monster. She fraternized with Xenos. She despised the faith. She robbed and slaughtered. She was drawn to dark secrets. One day she boarded her ship and vanished into the depths of the Coronas Expanse. She was declared missing, but I know the bloody day will come when we see Espus Corda's battle flagship once more. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to fight Espus Corda. Faith is more than just a word to you. Faith is everything to me. In his name I have eradicated corruption on a hundred worlds and will do so on a thousand more. <clears throat> By his will, I hunt down pirates and desolate their vile nests. Let Corda's name make any firebrand tremble, for sooner or later I will cast them into the void. Okay. Funny thing is, people still call me the foul tempered tyrant in all this. Emil's smile somehow resembles the bared teeth of a wild animal. I thank you for your visit. It will not be a long one, I assure you. What do you think of the celebration, folks? I like it. Looks around the hall curiously. One can instantly tell that we've been invited by a rogue trader, not some administrative bootlicker. We are conquerors of wild sectors, slayers of unknown beasts, executioners of Xenos empires. Caligus, you should take this opportunity to learn. This is what the palace of a true rogue trader looks like. Not a Xeno menagerie, a pirate's treasure hold, or, however difficult it may be for you to believe, an orbital brothel. <laughs> Okay, thank you for your visit. Cheerful and somewhat feral smile. I should be thanking you. I was almost certain that you would be use my difficulties on football as a means to bring that devious weasel Vladimir to heel and take the station for your own. It's why any rogue trader would have done. But you have proved yourself to be less predictable than that. Well then, since you have turned out to be a pleasant surprise and stopped Incendia from snatching my possession, I will compensate you for your efforts. A nice little world I conquered that I can never seem to get around to. I'll throw it in along with more substantial gift I have brought. Thwarting Incendia Corda's ambitions deserves a worthy trophy. Snaps his fingers and an armored brute hands you an exotically adorned rifle, clearly not of human making. It's a trophy from a good hunt. You and I should hunt together sometime so you can show yourself... In action, new blood. Zumi punches you in the shoulder. I have hacked on. Do I want that? I could do a dogmatic, dogmatic here. How about how fares your protectorate? More like the bleeding scraps of one. The warp storm tore it to shreds, but my servants will piece it back together. And if they don't, I'll chop off their heads and find myself more capable helpers. More period of time. Something strikes you as strange. Caligus Winter wasn't always this nonchalant about his protectors. He used to be known as a shrewd business minded and business minded, even concerned for his subjects. But it seems he has grown bored of ruling. Uh, 
Ah, uh, does your gift come with a good story? I could have him just destroy it. I wish I knew what this was. The Eye of Hector. I don't know, am I supposed to take it, folks? I don't know. I want to take it just so I can see what it is, but I don't want to get it. I don't want to be nice to him because I don't like him. See, what I'd like to do is take it from him and then say, Reverend, destroy this correction of detestable Xenos, just so I can see what it does. I guess I'll take it. I just want to see what it does. Enjoy the evening. I must take my leave. Keep the face. The Emperor protects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to see what this bloody thing does. <laughs> I have Hector. What is this? Two-handed ranged weapon. Light. Uh, grants five movement after each attack and allows the wielder to move after attacking. If an attack with this weapon hits three or more targets, this attack has no cooldown. Three or more targets? What kind of over-penetration does it have? Rate of fire 1, range 1, additional hit chance 20, dodge reduction 30, 35 armor penetration. So I guess if I gave that to... It's a LAS gun. But it's a Xeno artifact. 100% over-penetration. So if you can line up people... You can Deadeye shot. Take out a whole bunch of people. I might give that to your let. 30 to 45 damage? Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good to give to her. Okay, I think I'm done. I talked with everybody, right? Order the Master of Ceremonies. Okay, Master of Ceremonies. Please, not yet tired. I was to arrive yourself a little. I would suggest proceeding to the courtyard. It may be so bold. Many guests have chosen to move into the fresh air. We are to offer you their congratulations. I'm gonna... I'm at 12 minutes. Can we just end this and see where we go? Are there people I need to talk to? I don't see anybody that I need to talk to, so I think I'm just going to get... I'm just going to end it. Okay, I'm weary and wish to retire. Let me ask you your lordship. End dialogue. Okay, so we're just going to walk me to my quarters? This is not good. Chambers are ready, your lordship. Yeah. We walk in here. What's going to happen? This is not good. We walk in here. Guards, intrude. Quiet. Time to sleep. We need to talk. We have yeah. matters to discuss, von Valencius. Same man you saw among your guests is waiting for you in your chambers with the look of someone who is supposed to be there. He casts a cold, assessing gaze over you from top to bottom. No one save Theodora has ever allowed themselves the liberty of looking at you in such a way. We have matters to discuss. Okay. This is not good. This is the Inquisitor, isn't he? The woman behind Calcazar, clad in black armor, glares at you, her face set in predatory redness for immediate violence. Hallmark of a professional bodyguard. Give me a weapon at the intruder. If something looks like an assassin and smells like an assassin, perhaps I ought to start treating it like one. Probably kill me. I 
thought we were friends, but friends don't break into each other's chambers in the middle of the night with weapons, do they? We used other means of travel to pay you this visit. I assure you, rogue trader, that all your locks are in order. Will my servant live? Probably. Unless he suffered from hidden ailments, he will soon come to without any major damage to his health. Either way, oblivion is a far safer option for him than the dangerous privilege of being a witness to this conversation. I really want to do this. Something looks like an assassination and smells like an assassin. Perhaps I ought to start treating it like one? I don't think I can save here, can I? It doesn't let me save here. I'd have to go through all this again if I get myself killed here. I'm gonna do this. Your ill-considered behavior is both inappropriate and dangerous for you. It causes me no discomfort and won't hinder my inquiries in any way. Master Van Kellox has spent enough time with you. He will vouch for your words. What stands out from your recent accomplishments is the suppression of a rebellion on Janus, the battle against the archenemy's minions on Kiava Gamma, and, of course, the unusual interest the Drakari have shown in you. Then that is what we will discuss. After saying these words, he shoots you a searching look from under his brows like a regicide player who just made the first move and is now watching for his opponent's reaction. You're showing interest in me. Are you referring to my ruined capital? Yes, yes. The enmity between you is a known fact. But there is another way to look at it. On Veaboss 6, you met the Archon of a mighty cabal whose presence there seems strange to begin with and lived. You subsequently encountered a number of her closest henchmen. Yet again, you survived. Your capital fell victim to a nefarious attack. But even this time, their daggers missed your heart. Such remarkable luck. To be a personal enemy of such an influential Xenos. To have been attacked so many times and yet make it out alive. So remarkable that one has to wonder, am I watching a spectacle? Could all these thrilling massacres be an alibi of sorts? Meant to establish you once and for all as an enemy of the Xenos and never their ally or even their agent. God, good grief. I've been no good, but I was suspicious. What can I say? I'm lucky. That's the reason I'm alive. I'm waging war on Xenos, a war to the death. My worlds are being plundered and desolated. If that brands me an apostate, then I invite you to be my judge. War appearing succeeded. Oh, I succeeded at something. Uh, Xenos made more attempts on St. Drusus' life than mine. Does that make him a traitor, too? <laughs> so you already think you're cut from the same cloth as St. Drusus, do you? Ambitious? I'll make note of it. And what about Janus? What was the reasoning behind your decision to let Xenos, enemies of humanity, live and act on a planet that belongs to you? In the face, in the face of heresy, the Xenos seems like acceptable allies to me. There have been presses for this, correct? Your way of thinking is curious, dangerous, but curious nonetheless. I would suggest exercising utmost caution should you wish to continue on this path. If you knew uh, what was happening on Janus, why didn't you intervene yourself? I cannot satisfy your curiosity without disclosing information of the utmost secrecy. I will say only this. We had the situation under control. There is a tangled knot of perilous events in progress in the Coronas Expanse. Plucking even one thread must be performed with great precision and caution without any room 
for error. Ugh. I hate Because it. you do not want to know the price of such an error, or what forms it might take. Okay. Places yeah, touched by chaos must be purged with fire and condemned to oblivion. Kiava Gamma should have been bombed to dust and pronounced a forbidden world. However, you decided otherwise and restored the colony's operation. And you didn't even go to the trouble of hiding the traces of the neglect committed by your dynasty. After all, it was House von Valencius that gave Cubis Delphim so much freedom that he sank into seditious heresy. What was your rationale? I'm willing to put its performance at risk because of some paranoid fears. First time I'm hearing about this, my servants usually handle such matters. But the priesthood to Cubis Gunner belonged to answer for his crimes. The Adeptus Mechanicus would do well to watch their members more closely. Or I made every effort and saw to it that every seed of heresy was exterminated. The world's contaminant is tainted no more. I can vouch for that. I'll defend my world, I don't know. I almost want to do four and throw Pascal under the bus, but... I hope you are sufficiently thorough. If you are not, you will be called to account. Have I answered all your questions? Far from it, my dear. The questions are manifold. How did you manage to survive the battle that claimed the life of Theodora, who was so much more experienced and skilled than you? Is it a coincidence that you and you alone then made it out of the trap on Rykad Minoris? How much truth is there in the rumors being spread by the heretic Kunrad Voitvier about you? Why did you choose to ignore the warning of a member of the Inquisition that a protracted sojourn near the dying Rykad Minoris could bring corruption down upon your ship? Were you driven by your concern for the people or forbidden interest? Was it virtuous of you to allow the warp-stricken voidsmen to join your crew? The ones who served on the ship that was turned into a trap for you by Kunrad Voitvier? Isn't it possible that they were part of the blight he had sown? The very existence of these questions would have made many of my colleagues doubt the quality of your character. But it won't in this case. The Inquisition which I represent, is willing to show extraordinary faith in your person. For the sake of our invaluable partnership, I'm going to ignore any minor liberties that you, esteemed rogue trader, may have afforded yourself or may again in the future. I hope you appreciate the generosity of this offer as your predecessor once did. Blackmail? To what end? I'm a rogue trader. This is a flagrant violation of my privileges. Should I go down that route? I make no deals, and Emperor forbid that I give you orders. That would mean infringing on your privileges. I'm merely offering well-meaning recommendations and expecting that when the Expanse finds itself in danger, you will break away from your own affairs to heed them. As proof of the seriousness of my hopes for you, I can assign Heinrichs as your escort. Heinrich, he is okay. my best agent, and I would not offer his company to anyone but my most trusted ally. Oh, he just told me he's his best agent. Okay. Then Master Van Kellox will remain in place. It puts me at ease to know that there is someone to watch over you. Last remark sounds ambiguous, yeah. I consider it an honor to accompany you. My favor takes other forms as well. 
Please accept this gift as a sign of my favor. In an hour of need, give it to any faithful servant of the Emperor, and the Inquisition will come to your aid. Okay. The color indicates how close the bearer is to the Lord Inquisitor. Black means that you are a part of the inner circle. Any and all resources will be available to you. Black signet of the Inquisition. Once per combat. Plus 50 momentum. All common negative effects are removed from all allies. All allies gain. Where's procession divided by seven temporary wounds? Where's procession divided by seven percentage armor? Where's procession divided by 20 deflection until the end of combat? So persuasion. And persuasion is my long suit. Okay. <laughs> that would be a very bad thing to bring up to. Can't do a dogmatic. I see no reason to refuse such a generous offer. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not good enough to do that. I see no reason to refuse such a generous offer. Then we have reached a consensus, and I am pleased to see it. Here is where we part. My shuttle is waiting. It is time for me to return to my watch, for you to sleep, and for your servant to wake up. Until next we meet. I gained a bunch of experience out of this, but I don't like this. Well, you will obviously want to discuss what just happened, but not now. I presume. Right now, it will be better for you to rest and think on the Lord Inquisitor's words in private. I bid you good night, rogue trader. Okay. Are we done? Are we done? What's my time? 27 minutes. Are we done? Are we done? Black screen. Are we done? End of chapter two. Okay, we did. We finally made it through chapter two. God, that was a long the rise call. of the rogue trader air restored a tenuous equilibrium to the fond Valencius protectorate. For a time, threats subsided, activity returned to trade routes, and reclaimed worlds began to heal. Subjects praised the God Emperor and their leader wholeheartedly. For none knew what fate might await them. <sighs> okay, we have to assume that that's the end of chapter two. And we're going to put a break in here and call this the beginning of chapter three. Oh jeez, not gonna let me out. Not gonna let me out. Bloody heck. You have spent the first few hours of morning listening to the High Factotum's lengthy report on the latest trade exchanges, arrangements, disputes, and countless bureaucratic procedures. Procedures. From outside the illuminated, tightly closed windows, you can hear the muffled sounds of Dragonus in its everyday life. The life that has been passing by you by lately, as you have been preoccupied with the affairs of your protectorate from dawn till dusk. Clementia Wersian. Barely contains a yawn. Once Janice Denrock has finished, she pulls out her data slate. Thank you for your report, High Factotum. Your work is highly appreciated, both by everyone here and the Adeptus Administratum. Your Lordship, we're almost done here. We just need you to go over the final items on today's agenda that I would like to report to you personally. 
How long have you been trapped on Dargonis for the good of the Protectorate? Hurry up, I better hear some good news today. Next! Say nothing while retaining a board expression. Okay, let's do this, I guess. Same with diligent subjects. Make them all feel good. Let me to pass on gifts from your loyal subjects, the high nobility of Nargonas. Goes without saying that every living soul in your protectorate is blessed to serve loyalty faithfully and wholeheartedly. However, this humble gesture is meant as a token of deepest appreciation of your magnanimity toward their esteemed families. Oh, God. What am I getting? So I got a people. Got a uniform kit. Why did I get a people? How do you make people with cargo? How can you... S what? Provisions? Fuel? Fuel and armor goes in there, but... I mean, provisions and... People? How can I have a cargo of people? It doesn't make any sense. House of Syrian made arrangements for the delivery of several tons of supplies for your future journeys. The house is also transferring a regiment of its finest to your personal charge. Each of these brave troopers has undergone a rigorous void fair training and will be humbled to lay down their life for you to lurk at I'm just trying to maintain them. Root for them and you see your faces beaming with pride. Please come to as you see Phil. So I acquired cargo of people. I don't understand. How can you have cargo of people? That doesn't... I never had cargo of people before. Mechanicus Creations, okay. House Caprack has sent shuttles carrying sacred technology and manufactured parts that can be used to replace old joints and connections with the mechanisms. Machine spirits of these devices have been pacified. They are slumbering peacefully as they await your decision on how to employ their capabilities. Two, three, four of those, okay. News of particular import has come from the House's intelligent network. Lord Inquisitor Calcazar is rumored to be planning a visit to Footfall. A number of Imperial Navy ships were commandeered by Lord Calcazar, and they are also being scrambled to footfall. Furthermore, we have received reports claiming that secret messages were delivered to the capital worlds of House Corda and Winterscale. It's possible that the Lord Inquisitor's call to arms may smother the conflict that is brewing between the two dynasties. We are seeing an increasing number of skirmishes between their ships and neutral systems. I do not doubt that her ladyship Corda will attempt to sway the Lord Inquisitor to her side. Wonderful. Especially since his lordship, Winterskill's luck seems to be running out. Riots have broken out on several of his worlds, and yet he has shown no intention of quelling them. Instead, the rogue trader inflicted brutal punishment upon one of his oldest colonies, Vesuvia Secundus, based on allegations of seditious sentiment. Oddly enough, our agents were unable to find any proof of sedition among the populace there. As soon as we have any updates, you will be the first to know, your lordship. Lastly, lastly your pet Xenos, you're like, quit doing that. I believe is seeking a meeting with you. She had an audacity to file the rogue trader's palace with her profane presence and refuses to leave until she has spoken with you. I would never presume to be able to read the emotions of Xenos. The Aldari appeared perturbed. I believe she mentioned a void ship of some sort. It may be best if she told you everything directly. And with that, please allow me and Master Dominic to take her leave. The Chancellor and the High Factum offer you the bows. Perhaps that is the last request will serve as a welcome distraction indeed. Your ships today under it has been rather long. However, your protectorate is now enjoying a period of relative stability. That, for the time being, no longer demands your lordship's personal involvement and spares glory to the rogue trader. Okay. I get to go adventuring again? Go away. Okay. So now I'm standing up instead of sitting down. I can talk to my chair. Antique prisoners is obviously well careful. Okay, that's just talking about my stuff. Okay, what have I got? Troubling developments. House Winter Scale is displaying unusual activity at the borders of the Protectorates and as this car's cabin service a team just machine the movements and intentions with a possible plan for their steps. And she wants to talk to me. And the incident, we're still waiting on Nomos. And I still have to do this. So chapter three, troubling developments has started. Okay. So chapter three has started. Didn't want it to start here. I wanted to have that all at the beginning of the next one, but here it's at the end of this one at thirty five minutes or so. So if you like what you see, hit the thumbs up button. If you really like to see, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notify bell. You know if I upload videos and or schedule streams, please leave me comments. Let me know if you'd like to see me keep going and finish up on Chapter 3. I'm going to take a little bit of a break from doing some Rogue Trader. Um, there is a big, huge patch out. I need to see 
what that might have tail changing on my character if there's like a rebuild I really need to do in order to get things to, to mesh right. Um, it could make a huge difference on what I'm doing and where I'm going and what I'm, you know, trying to accomplish type thing. Um, so I'm going to be d looking into what the patch fixed or changed and then I will offline I will be looking through my characters to see if there's like a lot of things that I want to maybe redo. I'll see if I can do like one of those free respects and then not save that game. Just to see what else is out there for my various characters. Um, you know, if they've changed something for the Arch Militant or the Vanguard, that would be very important. Same thing for the Tacticians and the uh, Assassins and the Bounty Hunters and all that. Because I have a good mix of higher level things and officers and everything. So I need to go back and see what all that really entails. So I will be stopping here for a while. Um, and I will put up a poll. So go look for that on my channel. Um, and let me know if you want me to keep going and finish finish this off like I've finished off everything else that I've started like this. Uh, there is... People might be getting tired of all this. I don't know. Uh, and I really want to try and cater to what the uh, what my audience wants to see. I do have several other games that I'd like to get up and going as well. So we're going to stop with Rogue Trader for a little while, probably a week or two, before I do any more recordings here. And then uh, we'll see how I fare going forward. All right? All right. I'm John 608. Until we meet again, stay safe and bye-bye.